from Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents William Powell and Miriam Hopkins in Tavorish. Lux presents Hollywood. Romance, drama, and comedy come to you tonight under the title of Tavorish. A smashing success of the stage and screen, telling the story of two exiled members of the Russian nobility who swap their ermine for aprons. Our stars are William Powell and Miriam Hopkins, with C. Henry Gordon, Lawrence Grossmith, and Heather Thatcher. Our music is conducted by Louis Silvers, and our special guest is Grand Duchess Marie of Russia. Before hearing from our producer, just a word about the product which brings you this program, Lux Toilet Soap. This white soap is truly an aristocrat among soaps, for it not only cares for the lovely complexions of nine out of ten Hollywood stars, but lovely women in every village and city in cottage and mansion alike, depend upon its active lather to remove thoroughly dust, dirt, and stale cosmetics. They can't afford to risk cosmetic skin, the dome as tiny blemishes and enlarged pores that result from choke pores. It's vitally important for these screen stars in the movie spotlight to have skin that's beautiful to look at. And it's just as important for you. So take Hollywood's tip. Let Lux Toilet Soap help protect the loveliness of your complexion, too. Back on our stage, having opened his new picture, Union Pacific, throughout the country, is our regular producer. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. After traveling some 7,000 miles in the past three weeks and speaking on and off the air to audiences, which must have totaled a fourth of the population of the country, I've come back to this stage tonight with a new and humble appreciation of two things. The warm hospitality of the American people and their friendship for the products which bring this program to the air. In Latin, lux means light. And the light of the Lux Radio Theater blazed a path across the country along which our listeners welcomed me from coast to coast. In meeting so many of you, I didn't see the dim outline of strangers, but the clear, smiling faces of friends. And one of the great thrills of homecoming is that I can again be your host and repay in some measure your hospitality to me. Tonight's play, Tovarish, was written in spare time by the French dramatist Jacques Duval, who devoted most of his working day to writing another play, which he thought would be his masterpiece. The so-called masterpiece expired almost as soon as it was shown to the public, while Tovarish became a dazzling success. Cheered in 24 capitals abroad... This play has a universal appeal, best summed up perhaps by its title, which means comrade. Tavarish was adapted for the American stage by the playwright who just pocketed the Pulitzer Prize for writing Abe Lincoln in Illinois, Robert Emmett Sherwood, and was fashioned into celluloid by Warner Brothers. At that same studio, Miriam Hopkins has just completed another Pulitzer Prize winner, The Old Maid, and in tonight's play, she becomes the Grand Duchess Tatiana Petrovna. The imperturbable William Powell, he of the ready answer and faultless deportment, returned to create his third characterization as a butler. You saw him bottle in My Man Godfrey and The Baroness and the Butler. Tonight he responds to doorbells and to the name of Prince Mikhail. Three distinguished character actors also join our cast. C. Henry Gordon as Commissar Gorochenko, Lawrence Grossmith as Charles Dupont, and Heather Thatcher as Madame Dupont. And now for the play. The Lux Radio Theater presents Tovarish, starring William Powell and Miriam Hopkins. It's a gay spring morning in Paris. The early traffic darts through the narrow streets and whirls merrily across the bridges of the River Seine. On one of these bridges, a man strolls slowly. His clothes are worn and seedy, but there's great dignity in his bearing. A touch of cold aloofness toward his surroundings. Reaching the end of the footwalk, the man steps smartly off the curb. A taxicab lunges toward him and misses him by inches. Fool of a thousand fools! Why can't you look where you're going? You step on the curb like a man walking in a fog. Are you a blind fool as well as a stupid one? You may come down from your taxicab, Sukhameen. Your Excellency! You may kneel in the gutter and beg my forgiveness. Prince Mikhail! Well, come, come. Your Excellency, if I had but known it was you, I will tear my tongue out by the roots. Watch for your Excellency. I'll... No, 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 no. That won't be necessary this time. 
You may stand up, Sukamin. Oh, Your Excellency. It is so wonderful to see you again. Not since Petrograd before the revolution have I been blessed by the sight of your face. Your Excellency, the Grand Duchess. How is the Grand Duchess? Her Imperial Highness, the Grand Duchess Tatiana, has done me the honor to marry me, Sukamin. Yes, yes, Colonel Trapanov has told me. She's very well. When I see her later, I shall tell her you send your undying loyalty, that you lay your life at her feet. Ah, uh, yes. Come, Your Excellency, my, my taxi is at your service. Oh, thank you, but I think I'll walk. However, the Grand Duchess still enjoys an afternoon airing. You may call for her sometime. I will, Your Excellency, I will. Uh, your residence, Your Excellency. Uh, uh, 24, Rue de la Glacière. The alley to your right, up four flights, door to your left. Knock twice. Your Excellency. Tatiana. Yes, Mikhail. What are you doing? Washing. What is my darling doing? Your darling has been polishing his boots. He is now resting in bed. He's drawing the covers over his wasted limbs and trying to forget that there is no coal in the stove. Do you mind if I hang this up to dry in here? Oh, no, my sweet. I... What in the name of St. Christopher is that? Your shirt, darling. I washed it with my own hands. That is my shirt? That fragment? Yes, darling, your shirt. Your only shirt. But what has happened to the tail? Well, you had no more handkerchiefs, so I had to cut some out. Out of my shirt? Well, you know very well I used up the last of my chemises. Yeah. Oh, my darling. How can I beg your forgiveness? You sacrificed the last of your chemises, and I complain at the loss of a mere shirt tail. You're a saint, Tatiana, a saint. You're sure of that? It's the very word that was used by my imperial master, your august cousin. He said, in marrying Tatiana Petrovna, you marry a saint. Yes, he knew me very well. Yeah, he was speaking of your devotion, but not of your manners, Tatiana. And is there anything wrong with my manners? Oh, you can't be blamed for them. Blamed? You were born a grand duchess. You lacked the opportunity for social contacts that was given to the rest of us. Oh. Gave you a bad start in life. What do you mean? Wherever you go, I have to act as your interpreter and apologist. Get up. But why? Obey me. All right. And now, since you are such a good apologist, you will offer your apologies to me. My beloved Tatiana... Your apologies will be expressed in official form. <clears throat> General Prince Mikhail Alexandrovich Uratiev, aide-de-camp to His Imperial Majesty, Officer Imperial Highness the Grand Duchess Tatiana Petrovna, his very humble apologies. Approach. Ouch! How dare you say ouch? You're an officer. You're not permitted to feel pain. Oh, very well, Highness. The ouch is withdrawn. Oh, darling, darling, darling. <laughs> You're forgiven. Completely? Completely. Kiss me. Ah. Oh. How good it is to be Russian. And insane. Life for us is so very, very sad. Uh, and so very, very beautiful. And so tiresome. I'm starving. Oh, give me some money, Mikhail. Uh, money? Yes, I'm going shopping. But surely not with money. Oh, Mikhail, don't tell me there's none left. There is a sum of 100 francs, Tatiana, that is all. But that is enough. And out of the 100, we owe 80 to the proprietor of this lamentable hotel. Very well. You shall be paid. You're sure? But of course. I shall pay the landlord 80 francs and buy the food and bring back 80 francs. Tatiana, I don't understand your arithmetic, but I suspect the honesty of your intentions. Darling, do you trust me? Oh, within reason, my love. Then believe me. I swear by St. Peter and St. Paul. I swear to bring back 90 francs. Oh. I shall buy some cutlets of horse and some potatoes, and I shall bring back 95 francs and two artichokes. Uh, Tatiana, you're very fond of artichokes, aren't you? No, I hate them. But while the grocer's selecting the poorest potatoes, I shall be left alone amongst the artichokes. I humbly beg that the father of all living may look the other way, that he will not see the Grand Duchess Tatiana Petrovna, cousin to the Tsar, arrested for stealing artichokes. Nonsense. I'm never arrested. Mikhail, did you hear a knock? I'm under the impression that I did. If it's our friend, the landlord. If it is, I shall deal with him. Enter. Madame Couture. Who? I have a hat here for Madame Couture. Oh. Uh, we don't doubt it, my dear child, but she's not here. This is not where she lives, but the concierge told me. Oh, you, you are Russians. Yes, we cannot disguise it. And the lady, you are the Grand Duchess. 
Oh, but I should have known it at once. Your Highness, permit me to kiss the hand. Oh, charming, charming. Stand up, my child. It was all the concierge's fault. Oh, the concierge is an idiot. Now, here, take your little hat box and... Wait. This box is rather heavy. Oh, no, uh, thank you, Your Highness. A uh, Good day, Your Highness. Wait, I think I'd like to see but that hat. Please. No, Your Highness, it's not what I you... might decide to buy it. But open the box. I promise you, Your Highness, it is... It is Mikhail, you wouldn't... open it. Certainly, Your Highness. But... Mm. Well... Well, at least it contains no high explosives. What is it? Some very interesting documents. Listen, my dear. Workers of France, arise. Join your Russian brothers in the United Front. Well, Mademoiselle Spy, what do you want from us? What are you going to do with that money? 100 francs? We're going to buy art. The money you stole from Russia. Stole? Yes, stole. It came from the blood and the sweat of the millions. And now you hold it for yourself. Think I'll tell her to go. The Tsar gave you four billion francs. We know, and we want it. Four billion francs. Think I'll make her leave at once. Not yet, darling. Who sent you here? Do you believe I tell you? No, but I don't mind asking. Was it Gorachenko? I don't know. But we do. You may tell Commissar Gorachenko that you found us still in good health though slightly undernourished. Tell him we're prepared at any moment to be caught in one of the traps which he is so thoughtfully laying for us. And when he has caught us, he can burn us by slow degrees, but our policy will remain unchanged. Not a billion. Not a million. Not a thousand. Not a sou. Fine talk, you white-livered thieves. You think you're safe with your money because you're in Paris with gendarmes to guard you. But we know how to take back what was stolen from us. And when we do, we'll also take your miserable, worthless, evil life. The little beast. Of all the spies that have been inflicted on us, Mikhail, that one was the most ridiculous. You know, Tatiana, someday one of them will kill us. I don't doubt it. You're not afraid? Are you? No, my sweet. But they do want that money. You'll never give it to them. Not a billion, not a million, not a thousand, not a sou. The carrots, the peas, uh, that will be three francs, madame. Three francs? That's outrageous. Uh, oui, madame. And would madame like some uh, artichokes? Art oh, uh, no. no. Give me some potatoes. Oh, oui, madame. The very finest potatoes in Paris. You, madame, madame, I saw. What are you talking about? I saw the artichokes. You put oh. three of them in your dress. Oh. You stole them. Stole them? Oh, it's ridiculous. Uh, gendarme, gendarme. Here, here, what is it? No. Why do you annoy, madame? You are the police. Will you stand by and see me wrong? Oh, the man's mad. Mad, look at her. She bulges all over with artichokes. Oh. Hold your tongue. Go about your business. What? Go about Go what? on. You will be paid for artichokes. <laughs> Who will pay me? Who? I, I personally shall pay you. Now go. Oh, the world has gone mad. A gendarme will pay. Oh, c'est ridicule. Je We are sorry, madame. You will be oh. troubled no longer. The artichokes are yours. One moment, please. Why are you doing this? I have my orders, madame. From whom? The government, madame. The French government. They tell me whatever madame steals... What? Uh, pardon. Whatever madame forget to pay for, I am to pay. I see. We are very much in your debt. Oh, not at all, madame. Not at all. Mikhail. Yes, my love. Mikhail, we shall have to move. Move? From this hotel? Perhaps from France itself. But why? Because we are wards of the state. Today I went to a new grocer and I learned why I've been so successful. The French government, the benevolent French government, pays for all the food I carry away. Pays for it? Yes. The swine. Putting us in their debt. Mikhail, we must pay them. We must find out how much it is and we must pay them every last sou. But how? Take the money from the bank. Never. Oh, but it would only be a little bit to save our honor. Surely heaven would forgive us that. No, Tatiana. I received that money from the hands of a czar. It is into the hands of a czar, whoever he may be, that I shall give it back. Oh, Mikhail. Mikhail, well, what are we going to do? There is only one possible solution. I must work. Work? Mikhail, even for fun you mustn't say such things like that. <laughs> it isn't for fun, it's for food. But what could you do? Admiral Sukhamin works, he oh. navigates a taxi. Yes. And Colonel Trapana works at the Kazbek, mm -hmm. doing the dagger dance. I could do that. Oh. Two daggers on the belt, another in the teeth. Mm -hmm. Here, watch for Turner. Oh, no, no. Oh, 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 no. O
You would be full of holes the first performance. No. But, Tatiana, we'll starve. We'll die of starvation. I refuse to die or to let you die. We must find a way to live, Mikhail. Tatiana. Yes? I once heard of two of our people. They went into service. Service? He became a butler and she a maid. A butler and a maid. How did they find the position? I don't know. Oh, yes, yes. The newspaper. He told me he saw it in the newspaper. Oh, quick, quick, now. Um, here, the paper. Uh, now, where do we look? This is it. Domestic situations vacant. Let me see. There, there, there. Married couple. Uh-huh. Number four, Avenue de Tourville. Butler and housemaid. Oh. Two rooms of their own on the sixth floor. Oh. Use of motor car to go shopping in. Oh. One Sunday out of two, Ooh. central heating. Central heating. One Sunday out of two. It's absolute Ooh. paradise. Oh, but wait. We shall need references. References? Well, oh. we'll provide them at once. Sit down at the table and write. Well, what shall I say? Uh, the undersigned, the Grand Duchess Tatiana Petrovna, states that she has had in her service... Service? How do you spell it? With an S or a C? Uh, which looks better? Uh, C. C, then. Uh, in her service, uh, Michel Popoff and his wife, Tina Popoff. Popoff will not do. They'll think we made it up. The name will be Dubrovsky. Well, you remember the dentist in St. Petersburg. His name is Dubrovsky. Yes, Dubrovsky. Uh, they are faithful, loyal, uh, exceptionally intelligent, skillful, honest, and they do not drink. Do not drink. Do you suppose they have vodka in this house? If not, they soon will. But, uh, continue. And I am pleased to recommend them in the highest possible terms. And you sign. Yes, but do you think we've said enough about our good points? Uh, we mustn't exaggerate. Now, we'll call in person. Are you ready? Yes. Oh, but let's finish the vodka first. By all means. We may not be coming back. Oh, this is for courage. Here. A life for the Tsar, Tatiana Petrovna. A life for the Tsar, Mikhail Alexandrovich. Forward! <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of Tavarish, and our stars will be back with us after a short intermission. Now, here's a Hollywood restaurant and a young man and his young wife. How about a dance, beautiful? I want to show you off. Oh, show me off? What an idea. This place is full of beautiful women, but I'd love to dance. <laughs> Honestly, Joan, there's not a woman here half as beautiful as you. That's what you think, darling, and I'm glad you do. I hope you always will. Joan's a clever wife. She knows Ted thinks she's beautiful because he's in love with her and because she has a skin that passes the love test. When a man's in love, his eyes look closely and only skin that's smooth and soft can pass this test. It's such a pity when women let unattractive cosmetic skin, dullness, little blemishes and large pores, spoil the beauty of their complexions. Lux Toilet Soap removes stale cosmetics, dust and dirt thoroughly. Helps guard against choked pores because Lux Toilet Soap has active lather. This white, smooth, fine quality soap is the beauty soap nine out of ten screen stars use. It's the beauty soap clever young wives and clever women and girls everywhere use. It's so important to a woman's happiness to keep good looks, to keep romance. Make Lux Toilet Soap your regular beauty care. Our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Tavares, starring William Powell and Miriam Hopkins. The Grand Duchess and Prince Mikhail have fled before encroaching poverty. With their pitifully few belongings in a meager bundle, they arrive at the home of banker Charles Dupont. They stand stiffly side by side in the drawing room as the banker and his wife examine them carefully. And, uh, you're looking for a place? Uh, yes, monsieur. We saw your esteemed advertisement, so we're here. Uh, who were your previous employers? His Highness General Prince Mikhail Alexandrovich Uratyev. And his wife, Her Imperial Highness the Grand Duchess Tatiana Petrovna. Really? You have references, of course. Oh, yes, madame. Uh, here, madame. This letter was written by the Grand Duchess herself. 
Mm, this reference is most encouraging. Faithful, loyal, exceptionally intelligent. Evidently, you pleased the Grand Duchess. Uh, yes, madame. What wages do you expect? Uh, wages, madame? Well, how much do you really expect? Or how much do you expect to be paid? Oh, well, we don't know, madame. Well, we don't know at all. <laughs> what did you receive in your last place? Oh, uh, let well, me see. Uh, just what was it, Tati, uh, uh, Tina? I can't uh, quite remember. It was not a billion and not a million, not a... Thousand. Oh, I should hope not. Uh, perhaps you're not very familiar with French money. Oh. That's it, sir. That's it exactly. Well, it doesn't matter whatever it is. I shall give 700 to the butler and 400 to the maid. No, that will not do. I consider it a very good wage. It's a most magnificent wage. No, 400 for the butler and 700 for the maid. Well, you can arrange that between yourselves. You are engaged. Oh, oh may Thank the you, great Madame. father bless you. You will be here on a temporary basis. Have you addressed you, Michel? Uh, dressed? Oh... No, madame. Well, how did you dress at her highnesses? Uh, in Russian fashion, madame. Uh, boots, uh, wide breeches, blue belt, and a bright red shirt with dagger in the chest. <laughs> Very picturesque, but I hardly think that would be quite the costume for our needs. We should be proud to adjust ourselves, madame. There are four of us here. Monsieur Dupont, your master. Monsieur? The master. Myself. The lady. Oh, my lady. And, uh... And our children, Monsieur mm. Georges and Mademoiselle Elaine. Oh, children. How wonderful. Children, Tina. Well, uh, mm. they're quite grown up. Now you may go to the kitchen. That way, please. Yes, madame. Yes. Oh, thank you, madame, monsieur. Uh, not at all, my child. Run along. To the kitchen, Tina. Michel. Oh. You first, Tina. Thank you. Well, I think they've made rather a good impression, Charles. I like his manners. I like her better. Yes, I noticed that. I saw the way you looked at her. What do you mean? She has a very melting expression. Most effective. Do you realize you're talking about a servant? Yes, my dear, but also a Russian. A Russian or Swede or Anamite. I'm not interested in housemaids. And I don't at all like the implication that I notice her looks, melting or otherwise. Hello. Oh, come in, Georges. Come in, Helene. Father, who were those two odd-looking people we passed in the hall? Our new servants, but judging by your mother's attitude, I'm afraid they will not grow grey in our service. Really, Mother? Can't we ever have decent-looking servants in this house? Is there anything wrong with their appearance? He looks more like a waiter than a butler. She seems a cheap, impudent little oh, thing. Oh, be quiet. I want you to understand that I will not let you treat these people like dirt under your feet, as you did Francois and Bert. They would have been here now if it hadn't been for you. Mother, please. Oh, that's enough. Are you dining home tonight? No. I'm dining with the Comtesse de Moore, Pandy. There's to be a rehearsal of that dreary Venetian fate, and she wants me to be one of the musicians. You're not going to try to play that guitar of mine. It's for the benefit of the orphans. Heaven help them. Shut up. Oh, for goodness sake, stop fighting. He's rude. You're both rude. Insufferable. Where are you going, George? To the club. I'm going to fence with Aldenardi, the world champion. Then may heaven help you. Now listen, Elaine. Don't yell at me. You're too afraid. Oh, shut up. I won't. Oh, yes, you children. 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 Your vest, monsieur? Uh, thank you. Uh, Michel! Yes, sir? Do you always hum at your work? Did you say hum, sir? You were humming, unmistakably. <laughs> You're quite right, sir. So I was. It, it was a sensation of joy, sir, at being in your service. It shan't happen again, sir, I assure you. Uh, now, sir, uh, may I fetch you some medicine? A medicine? What for? For your headache, sir. How did you know I had a headache? I can see it in your eyes, sir. A struggle against intolerable pain. You're very observant, but medicine will do me no good. This is a headache that only the guillotine could cure. Oh, no, sir. There's a Russian remedy that is infallible. My former master, uh, Prince Urotiev, made use of it quite often with immediate results. You sure it's harmless? Utterly, sir. Then go ahead and mix it. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, have you a shotgun? Why, yes, I have. Well, what are you talking about? Oh, very good, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Michel! Come back here. A shotgun. What a, what a mercy. Good heaven... evening, sir. What do you mean by bursting in on me like that? Madame wishes to know if you are ready to leave for dinner, sir. Well, can't you knock? Knock what, sir? At the door. You're not supposed to come bursting into rooms without giving warning. Oh, but I did give warning, sir. I scratched. Do you always scratch? Oh, always, sir. The Grand Duchess objected to knocking. It frightened her. It meant only one thing to her. Bolsheviks. And the Grand Duchess... Yes, if you'll pardon me for saying so, my girl, in the few hours you've been here, I've grown pretty tired of the Grand Duchess and her peculiar ways. 
In fact, I'm beginning to understand why they had a revolution in Russia. There would have been no revolution if it hadn't been for bankers. How dare you oh. speak to me like that? You're an insubordinate, oh. ill-bred foreign... Oh, I know it, sir, I know it. And I deserve the punishment you're going to give me. Punishment? When Russia was Russia, a servant who talked back to her master was whipped and lifted by the ears and dipped into ice-cold water. Yes, they went too far in Russia. We, we don't do any of those things here. But you must do them. The master is the master and the servant is the servant. Beat me. Oh, please, please, please. I, I can't beat you. Oh, but you, you must, I, sir, you must. I have no intention of lifting you by your ears. Oh, then you forgive me, sir. Uh, yes, but please, please get up. And you will give me the kiss of reconciliation? What? When the master forgives, he gives the servant the kiss of reconciliation on the brow. Oh, I see. Well, uh... There. Thank you, sir. Good Lord! Here you are, sir. So you scratch, too. You can't knock, I suppose. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. Have I offended you, sir? Uh, no. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. No. So what, what is that? Is it water? Oh, no, sir. It's a recipe, sir. There is no record of a headache that could resist it. His Imperial Majesty himself... All right, all right. His Imperial... You're sure there's nothing harmful? I know, sir, that if I have misrepresented the facts in any way, the penalty for me will be a ghastly, lingering death with red-hot bayonets in my eyeballs. Yes, no, never mind. I believe you. <laughs> Do not breathe, sir. Drink it off in one gulp. <coughs> That's right, sir. Do you see anything, sir? Butterflies. Yeah, that will pass, sir. A cigarette, sir? Yes. What's in that infernal stuff? A pure gin. Ah. A hundred grains of salt. Oh. Uh, Twenty gra drops of ether. Oh. And a hundred and fifty grains of gunpowder. Gunpowder? Uh, yes, sir. I took the liberty of opening one of your cartridges. Gunpowder? Good Lord, if I light a cigarette, I'll explode. Oh, no, sir. The powder is damp. Kyle. Have they gone? Out for the whole evening. Well, oh. how do you like our job? I say, heaven be praised. I join you in devout gratitude, oh. especially for the bed. What bed? In our room. Oh. Didn't you notice it? It's magnificent. No, I was looking out of the window at the view. Mikhail, we can see the cross on the Orthodox Church. We can see Russia. It is paradise. Oh, if I have to leave this place, I shall die. And I with you. Oh, Tatiana, oh. my darling. Oh, Am I disturbing you? Oh, uh, not at all, sir. not, sir. Are there any orders, sir? I want you to clean these foils and uh, wipe up the gloves and masks, too. Yes, sir. And if you will allow me, sir, mm -hmm. I'll change the point d'arrêt. Uh, these are badly blunted. All right, change them. I'm fencing with an Italian who goes at it like a bull. Oh, that can't worry you, sir. Why? You have a good reach. Evade the blade rather than engage it. You fence? Uh, I played at it, sir. Uh, does your opponent keep his pointed line? No. Well, then I should not try to bind the blade too often, sir, or you'll be hit. How? Uh, may I show you, sir? On guard! On guard, sir. Touché! Oh, but I wasn't ready. On guard! On guard, sir. Touché! Oh, please, Michel, let Monsieur George hit you once. Oh, I don't want any favors. On guard, Michel! At your service, sir. George! Mrs. George, your sister's calling. George! Have you gone crazy? Shut up. Oh, he's a marvel. Come on, Michelle. Very good, sir. That's enough. I want you to tune this guitar. Oh, tune it yourself. I'm busy. Oh, permit me, mademoiselle. Oh, do you play the guitar? Oh, yes. Then perhaps you could teach me. Mm -hmm. I should be delighted. Thank you. Oh, to George. Oh, I've talked to you before, sir. About binding the blade. Touche. I'm gone. Is that a Russian tune? Yes, mademoiselle. It's called Black Eyes. Oh, oh, oh. You Keep your guard up, sir. Elaine, go make some cocktails. I'm not going to the pub tonight. I'm going home, too. Will have a cocktail, Michelle? Oh, I should love one, sir. Three cocktails, Elaine. And perhaps one for my dear wife, Monsieur George. Four cocktails, Elaine. Touché. Aha. That's better, sir. That's much better. Touché, Anka. Very good, sir. Ah, again. Touché, Anka. Ah, you improve very rapidly. <laughs> Russian word for sir. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, Gospadin. Friend? Mm, Druk. Comrade? Tovarich. Oh, no, no? George. Tovarich. Oh, Tovarich. 
Tavarish, Michel. Uh, Tavarish, Tina. Seems funny to think they've only been with us a few weeks. I feel I've known Tina for years. He's marvelous. Yes, yeah, she is, isn't she? Uh, Elaine. What? How do you say in Russian, I love you? Yavaslu blue. How do you know? I looked it up. Oh. What time is it? Hmm, half past seven. And we want to be well out of here before those stuffy guests arrive for dinner. We'll be out of here all right. Michelle and Tina are going to join us later at the Russian place. Oh, Tavares, Tina. What is the matter with you? Oh, nothing. Da, 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 Where are you going? Da, 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 nowhere. Nowhere? That's nice. I just saw her in the library. Tina. Oh, good evening, Mrs. George. Uh, what are you doing? Fixing the flowers. Oh, please, let me help you. Thank you, Mrs. George. Uh, where does it go? On the table, here. You're kind, Mrs. George. Kind? What does that mean, kind? Oh, Tina, don't you understand? Dear little Mrs. George, what do I not understand? Tina, il was le bleu. Oh, you mustn't say it like that. Oh, but I mean it. Il was le bleu. No. No? Yavas Lou Blue. Like that. The way you say it, it sounds like little sick dog. I love you. And it's right you should. The master must love the servant and the servant the master. I love you too, Mrs. George. Oh, but don't you see? I love you. Can't you understand that? Mrs. George, you're a dear, delightful little boy. And I'm a housemaid. You're not like any other housemaid that ever lived. No, no. I'm superior. I realize that. Oh, Tina, I have money. I can make you happy as a princess. A princess? I only want to be as happy as a housemaid. Now you may kiss me. Tina. There. And you mustn't think about me anymore. Tina. Because this kind of foolishness bores me. It bores me very much indeed. Oh, no, oh, Tina. Uh, uh, Please, come Monsieur here. George. George. Oh, good evening, sir. What's going on here? Oh, it's all my fault, sir. It was nothing of the kind. I well, was I only... don't care to hear anything from you. Now, kindly leave the room. Very well. I shall kindly leave the room. I regret very much that this has happened, Tina. You must not blame him, sir. He's such a sweet little I boy. I do blame him and myself for having allowed such bad manners to develop in my son. Come here, Tina. Yes, sir? I want you to forgive me. Of course, sir. No, 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 no. You must forgive me in the Russian way. <laughs> the uh, kiss on the brow. All right, sir. Thank you. You have the most extraordinary eyes, Tina. Melting, that's what they are, melting. And your hands, your lovely little hands. Will you dress for dinner, sir? Eh? Oh, oh uh, <laughs> I, I didn't hear you come in, Michel. I scratched, sir. Oh, you, was, <laughs> you scratched. Uh, uh, do you wish to use the blue glasses or the bohemian glasses for the Moselle, sir? Whichever you like, my friend. The blue glasses, Mademoiselle Helene. Very well, Michel. Is my daughter laying the table? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, she expressed a wish to do so. Bless my soul. Michelle, you are to serve the cocktails. And Tina, my dear, you serve the sakuska. The concierge will be at the door. He'll do the announcement. Yes, madam. Very good, madam. Oh, Charles, have you spoken to them about our guest of honor? Well, I was about to mention that. Uh, uh, madam, and I appreciate the fact that your sympathies are with the cause of white Russia. Yes, sir. And naturally, we understand your, your devotion to your former employers and... The uh, prince and princess... Oh, for uh, heaven's sake, Charles, come to the point. Our guest of honor tonight is a representative of the Soviet government, Commissar Gorachenko. Gorachenko? You heard of him? Well, Michel? Uh, yes, sir. We've heard of Commissar Gorachenko. I've never met him. But I suppose he's pretty much of a bore. He's a most cultivated man, madame, with a very lively wit. A bit malicious, perhaps, but keen. It was he who composed that immortal sentence which was engraved on the door of the Lubyanka prison. Four walls for punishment are three too many. Well, we must try to forget the past. Gorachenko is now representing the Soviet oil interests. And oil, as we all know, is most effective in, um, in, in smoothing out... Uh, he was not always in oil, sir. General Gorachenko was chief of the investigating staff at the Cheka. At that time, my former master, Prince Uratiev, had some dealings with him. Really? Yes, sir. The conversation between them wasn't progressing as smoothly as Gorachenko wished. So, uh, to enliven matters, he placed the end of his cigarette, uh, the lighted end, of course, 
between Prince Muratyev's fingers. You'll find him very interesting, sir. Oh, how horrible. When he was commissar of the fort of Kronstadt, the Grand Duchess Tatiana Petrovna was imprisoned there. I've heard her speak of him often. He did not confine the cigarette trick to men prisoners only. And he had others, too. Very entertaining. Oh, my dear, I do hope you're not going to think of these dreadful things when you're serving the soup. <laughs> oh, madame, we shall think only that we are your servants and that we must be worthy of your trust. Mm, of course. I knew we could depend upon you. Charles, isn't it time for you to be Don't worry, I'll, I'll be ready. Tatiana. Tatiana, don't look like that. Korchenko. Oh, the name sticks in my throat. Darling. He'll recognize us, won't he? And then it'll all be over. All the happiness we've had here. Our little room. One Sunday out of two. He'll take that away from us like he's taken everything else. There's work to do, Tatiana. We're servants in this house. Oh, Mikhail, hold me. Tatiana. <sighs> I'm ready now. We'll go to the kitchen. Up to you, Highness. We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. just heard Act Two of Tavarish, starring William Powell and Miriam Hopkins. They return soon for Act Three, but now it's intermission time, time to hear from the evening special guest. But before we do, a word about our product. No one denies the fact that fresh, fragrant skin is appealing. It is easy to be sure of this important charm if you take the screen star's advice and make Lux Toilet Soap your daily bath soap, too. One of the very loveliest screen stars, Barbara Stanwyck, says... A Lux Toilet Soap Beauty Bath is the best way I know to make sure of daintiness. It leaves skin really sweet. Miss Stanwyck is right, because that rich, active lather carries away every trace of perspiration, dust, and dirt. You feel refreshed from top to toe, and a light, attractive fragrance lingers on your skin. Try it, won't you? Make your daily bath a beauty bath with Lux Toilet Soap. And now, here's Mr. DeMille with an introduction to our guest. Our play tells the adventures of the Grand Duchess Tatiana Petrovna. We're about to present you now to another Grand Duchess, who's widely known in this country and whose name stands for adventure, dignity, and achievement throughout the world. Our guest has lived two lives, first as a princess of the Russian crown and cousin of the late Tsar, then as a humble and penniless exile. She's Grand Duchess Marie, who escaped from Russia in the 1918 uprising when 21 members of her immediate family were killed, who earned her first money knitting and embroidering, and who, since coming to this country, has gained new fame and distinction as an author, lecturer, photographer, and designer. Royalty steps to our microphone now as we switch to New York City and the presence of Her Imperial Highness, the Grand Duchess Marie of Russia. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Your play tonight, Tavarish, is one which I saw three times and loved dearly. The first time I saw it, I sat and wept through the entire performance. It brought back so vividly, so truly, the problem which I too had to face, that of redesigning my life after its very foundations had crumbled. In 1928, I arrived in your United States with a suitcase, a typewriter, a guitar, and the first draft of a manuscript, partly French and partly in Russian, which I hoped someone would publish. Behind me lay a lifetime which even then seemed half like a dream, a life so different from the one I live now that I sometimes wonder if it really did happen. Right now it seems so strange to think of a childhood spent in palatial halls, surrounded by a retinue of servants, with my nearest and dearest companion, my brother Dmitri. 
One thing was consistently drummed into our ears, a saying which came down to us from my great-grandfather, the Emperor Nicholas I, who would say to his children, always act so that you will be forgiven for being born Grand Dukes. It was good advice and taught us a certain humility and the feeling that we must belong to the world at large, a feeling that I, as well as the two Russians in your play, would indeed be lost without. This feeling of humility has made many exiled Russians of noble birth successful at a more modest occupation. It is the driving force which compels each of us, whether known to the world as Princess Tatiana or Housemaid Tina, to be the best princess or the best housemaid possible. There were times, such as my wedding to Prince William of Sweden, when even being a Grand Duchess was difficult indeed. I can remember bewildering months of preparation, a dress of silver cloth, heavy jewels which only Grand Duchesses wore, the weight of it all so great that once I sat down, I had to be helped up. But the world has changed much since then, and although it has changed quickly, it is not so fast as a proverbial Russian temperament can change. It is our burden and our joy to be able to give ourselves swiftly, swiftly to whatever mood seizes us, as Tina and Michael so well portray. I try to use this inherited tendency and make myself adaptable enough to fit into life in the United States. Happily, it was not necessary for me to rely only on philosophy for long, for I found a welcome on these shores and a place in your world. I am convinced that you fortunate people who accept your freedom as casually as you accept that sunshiny day do not realize nor appreciate as I do the real greatness of your country. Finding a home here has widened my horizon and continued my education and I'm indeed grateful for the warm welcome I found. I grieve for the past sometimes, but I cannot regret the lessons I have gained through bitter experience. Life must be lived as it comes to us. I know it is hard to be gay in the face of dreadful events, but I put my faith in a happy ending for Tina and Michael, for myself and, ladies and gentlemen, for you too. That was a royal treat, madam. Now in Hollywood, we present the third act of Sovarish, starring William Powell and Miriam Hopkins. You can see Henry Gordon, Lawrence Grossmith, and Heather Thatcher. It's a few minutes before dinner, and Gorochenko still has not arrived. In the drawing room, the Duponts entertain one of the other guests, Madame Van Hemmert. You Hollanders are a remarkable people. We've had to be, Monsieur Dupont. And Gorodjenko. What is he like? I confess I'm a little nervous. Don't worry, madame. He can't be agreeable in my fun. He's in the right mood. And when he's in the wrong mood. He has the grace to keep ominously quiet. Oh, excuse me, madame. Yes, Tina. Oh, uh, shall we serve the cocktail? Her imperial height. Oh, no, no, no. Please don't do that. Please don't. Oh, excuse me, madame. What on earth? I beg your pardon, madame, but just why did you curtsy like that? Why is she here? That's our housemaid. She's a Russian. Yes, she is the former Grand Duchess Tatiana Petrov. The... No, 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 no. You're mistaken. She was employed by the Grand Duchess. She is the Grand Duchess. I knew her well in Petersburg. <laughs> is her husband, Prince Oratiev, here too? Prince Oratiev? Oh, I suppose that's Misha. Uh, are you sure about this? I promise you, Madame Dupont, I couldn't possibly be mistaken. Charles. What are we going to do? Commissar Gorochenko. <laughs> Gorochenko. Oh, Charles. Shh. Quiet. Mr. Dupont, I believe. Uh, yes. Uh, how do you do, Commissar? Very well, thank you. Uh, my, uh, my wife, Commissar. Madame Dupont. Uh, how do you do? Uh, Madame Van Hemert, you already know. Oh, Madame Van Hemert. Good evening. It's a most distinguished gathering. I feel ill at ease already. You know how distinguished it really is once you see who else is here. Oh, there are other guests. Well, thank heavens I'm not the last. Yes, there are others, but not exactly guests. Would you have a cocktail, sir? Uh, thank you, I... Oh... Yes, thank you. Hors d'oeuvre, sir? Yes, uh, I believe I will. Uh, 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 Commissar, about the deal for the oil land... Oh, your pardon, Russia. monsieur. I drink to you, Madame Van Hemmert. The gathering is very distinguished indeed. Uh, 
Mikhail, wash this one again, please. Isn't it clean? Look at that. Oh, yes. I thought it was part of the design. Hideous china, isn't it? Yes. Yet, I love it. I shall miss it very, very sorely. Mikhail. Madame Dupont has asked us to leave, Tatiana. Yes, I was waiting for you to tell me that, Mikhail. Oh, God must know that we've been good servants. Surely he'll find us another place. Yes, I hope so, too. Oh, my poor tragic pigeon. You weren't nearly so depressed when they burned down the house and destroyed all the beautiful horses in the stable and the Rembrandts in the library. That was in Russia, Tatiana. Well, and where are we now? The kitchen of a French banker named Dupont. No, it is our kitchen, Mikhail. Breathe the air, my darling. It smells of onions and coal gas and brown soap. But when you breathe it in, it becomes the air of Russia, cold and clean. Wherever we may go, it will be the same. In our lungs and our eyes and our hearts, there'll be Russia. Good evening. Uh, may I come in? What have you come for? The silver? Get out of here, Gorachenko. Pick him up with the coal tongs, Mikhail, and throw him out. I should consider that inhospitable in the extreme. It is my recollection that once Madame was the Grand Duchess of Russia... I am always the Grand Duchess of Russia. Exactly. And I'm sure you haven't forgotten that in any house which is graced with your presence, you are the hostess. I am, therefore, madame, your guest. The dog is right, Mikhail. Sit down. Ah, thank you. Oh, you keep your kitchen uh, in admirable order. Does Monsieur Dupont know you're here? No, he thinks I'm in the study, looking at a very important document he wants me to sign. Mm. I came in here to think more clearly. And will it help you to think, to see how I wash the dishes? Oh, I'm sure you do it with flawless grace. You should know. I was given many lessons of dishwashing when I was under your command in Kronstadt prison. Oh, that was a rigorous school, madame. Yes, those who broke the dishes were shot or beaten. I see no reason to refer to that, madame. Oh, I hold no grudge, Gorochenko. No, I'm sure you don't. But I'd like to have you know that when I get back to Russia, I shall have your eyes burned out and the sockets filled with Siberian salt. And if you do come back, madame, the most horrible retribution you can think of will be no more than I deserve, because I was guilty of the most unpardonable of crimes. It does me no good to hear you admit it. I was guilty of sentimentality. Oh, sentimentality. <laughs> That's a rather quaint way of describing it, Commissar. I was referring to the moment of weakness <laughs> when I permitted you to escape in that motorboat through the darkness. You knew that boat was there? Yes, madame. Why did you let me escape? Well, there was something in you that impelled me to neglect my obvious duty. And I could not rid myself of the belief that your usefulness to Russia had not ended. That can't be the reason you're here now. Oh, but it is, you know, Prince Ratyev. I, uh, I want you to do me a slight favor. You have only to ask, Commissar, and it will be refused. I want you to write me a check for four billion francs. Is that why you came into our kitchen for a mere matter of four billion francs? Yes, madame. You would excuse me, Commissar. It's time to take him the lemonade. But first you will sign a check. It won't take a moment, General. For two hours, I've been closeted in there with chauffeur Dubief of the Bank of France, Madame von Hemmert, whose name is Anglo-Dutch Oil, and Dupont of the representative of the United Petrol. Can you imagine why they were so cordial to me? They want me to sign the transfer of the Bakura and Petropol's oil fields for the next 50 years. And will you sign? I've been fighting to avoid it. For it would mean 50 years of English, Dutch, and French digging Russian soil, capitalizing Russian resources, drawing lifeblood from the veins of our country. Keep up the fight, Commissar. Don't sign. Oh, I'm afraid I must, General. Or I've been commissioned to find credits in gold for the Soviets of the Ukraine and Ural for the manufacture of tractors. If I don't find that money and at once, some five million wretched peasants will starve to death. I have no money. Oh, you have four billion francs. That is not mine. It was given to you unconditionally by Nicholas Romanov. It was given him by the Tsar. Ah, yes, madame. That was 1917, but now... You needn't continue, Gorachenko. I have refused that money to all the scavengers who tried to take it from me. I have held on to that money as I have held on to my immortal soul. I have even denied it to myself. Very well, General. I wish I could take you now into the Tsar's room at Sarkozello. Is it still there? Intact, madame. It has been preserved precisely as it was. Is my photograph still there? Yes, madame. Oh, but it pains me to say it. You have now a mustache. Oh. No supplied by a barbarous visitor. Oh. Well, he was condemned to ten years' penal servitude. For less majesty. Oh, for damaging the worker's property. 
Prince Horatiev. Do you remember in that room on the wall behind the Tsar's desk a big map of all the Russias? Yes, I remember the map. At the bop, bottom of it, to the right, are marked Bakura and Petropolsk. Of all the undeveloped oil fields in Earth, they are the richest. If I sign that agreement with the foreigners, a part of that map will have to be torn away. Then don't sign. Well, the peasants must have tracked us. But not from me. I received that money from the Tsar. And who was the Tsar, General? He was beyond your degraded comprehension. Ask of you, madame, who was the Tsar? He was Russia. Yes, he was Russia. And therefore, he's not dead. And now, the money will save him. Mikhail, it's for Russia. Tatiana, you want me to sign? Yes, Mikhail. Give him the money. Tatiana, you loved the Tsar, didn't you? And understood him. He wouldn't have let Bakura and Petropolsk go, would he? Even at the cost of his throne, his life. No. He wouldn't have let them go. Never. From the depths of his grave, he sees you. And he says that you are fulfilling his trust. From the very heights of the skies, he's reaching down to guide your hand. Sign the check, Mikhail. Very well, Your Highness. What is your Christian name, Gorachenko? No, Dmitri. Dmitri Gorachenko. One of the most heartless, soulless, ruthless blackguards that ever desecrated the surface of this earth. I have made this out, balance of account. The first check and the last. Tatiana Petrovna Romanova, Mikhail Alexandrovich Oratyev. The flag of the Romanovs no longer flies over Soviet territories. But I shall arrange with the Central Committee that it shall be affixed twice in the map in the room that was once the Tsar's. It shall mark the spot that is Vakura and the spot that is Petropolsk. And those flags, will they be protected from vandals? Yes, madame. And could you also have the mustache removed from my picture? Oh, well, that will entail a certain amount of red tape. However, it is a promise. Thank you. That is all. Goodbye, Imperial Highness. Goodbye, Tovarish. Goodbye, Russia. <laughs> Tatiana, my dear, are you ready? Yes. I was, I was just taking one last look at, at our little room. We shall never see it again like this. You're beautiful tonight, my darling. I wore this dress at our last grand ball and this cape. After tonight, I shall put them away with my dream. Tatiana, Monsieur George and Helene... I'll be waiting. Go to the kitchen, Mikhail. Wait for them. They have me. Yes, sir. Monsieur Dupont. I've been waiting for you here. <coughs> I want a few words with you. Very good, sir. I never dreamed that you could do such a cruel thing to us. Perhaps someday you will forgive me, sir. But we understand perfectly that you and Madame have every reason to detest us, wish to be rid of us. No, 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 no. We do not detest you. Oh, Thank you, sir. In fact, we, well, uh, we respect and admire you. But what will you do now? The same sort of work, we hope, sir. Then if that is what you wish, Madame and I have been talking it over, we... Mikhail, I'm ready. Your Imperial Highness. Oh, oh please, no. sir, don't. You were saying... I was about to say, if you are determined to continue with this sort of work, then why not continue with it here? You mean you wish us to stay? Well, that is... I mean, it's for you to say... Before all the saints, sir, I swear to you that never by word or deed should we remind you that we have ever been other than Michelle and Tina. You may reduce our wages to nothing. You may beat us with whips. You may cancel every other Sunday we have free. If you wish us to... Very well, very well, then that's settled. Oh, monsieur, we are your slaves. Our lives are yours. No, 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 no. I mean... <laughs> I mean, that's enough. It's, uh, well, uh, uh, good night. Oh, we are Saved. Saved. The Russian God has saved us again. Never have two poor Russians had greater cause for celebration. Come, Tatiana. Oh, our kitchen, our dear darling kitchen. Oh, look, Pigeon, it's snowing. It's so beautiful. I'm so sad. Yes, everything's so sad, isn't it? Even the happiness. Especially happiness. Your eyes are full of tears. 
There's a reflection of yours, Tatiana. No. Oh, we're fools now, do we, Mika? Yes, my darling. <laughs> fools now and forever. Come. Yes. Oh, no, wait. I've forgotten something. Your jewels, Your Highness. The milk bottles, my prince. If I don't leave them out for the milkman, the Russian guards won't do it for me. Come, Mikhail. Forward, Your Highness. Prince and the Grand Duchess of Tavares toss away their titles and face the microphone as William Powell and Miriam Hopkins. And welcome back, Mr. DeMille. It's surely good to see you in Hollywood again. Incidentally, it appears that we've done a turnabout since I was here last. At that time, I was the one who had just come back from New York. Mm, and at that time, you had something to say not only about New York, but about Lux Soap. Oh, and what I said still goes. It's certainly a great help in keeping the complexion smooth and nice-looking. I know... I use Lux Soap all the time, and from my observations around this town, practically every actress regards it just as highly as I do. But getting back to New York, did you have a good time? Miriam, you should have seen the crowds at the station when I arrived. The, oh. the whole city was on holiday. Well. Bands playing, flags flying, streets mm -hmm. teeming with excited millions. And to think they did all that just for... For you, Cecil? No, Bill, for the opening of the World Fair. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and incidentally, it's a great show. <laughs> Now that Union Pacific is able to stand on its own two feet, Cecil, or uh, its own two rails, what are you going to focus your camera on next? <laughs> I really don't know. What are you going to do? Well, I'm scheduled to bring back the thin man again. Oh, but that was announced months ago, William, and you haven't started making it yet. What goes? I've been waiting for the doctors to tell me that I can go out and play, Miriam. Mm -hmm. Present plan is for me to put on my gum shoes next month at MGM and start detecting again. Meanwhile, many thanks, Cecil, and good night. Good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night, Tavares. <laughs> our plans for your entertainment next Monday will be announced shortly by Mr. DeMille. Assisting our stars tonight were Florence Baker as Mademoiselle Helene Dupont, Jean O'Donnell as Monsieur Georges Dupont, Helen Geddes as Olga, Lou Merrill as Admiral Sukumin, Rolf Sedan as shopkeeper, and Frank Nelson as gendarme. Louis Silvers appeared through courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio. He directed music there for the new picture, Rose of Washington Square. Be sure to listen to the new Lux daytime radio program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan. The makers of Lux Toilet Soap bring you this enthralling story about the love and problems of a young, attractive woman doctor every afternoon, Monday through Friday. Look in your newspapers for the time and station. The Life and Love of Dr. Susan comes to you in addition to the Lux Radio Theater. Your host, Mr. DeMille. One of the great screen successes of recent months is reenacted in the Lux Radio Theater next Monday night. Angels with Dirty Faces. This is a melodrama of New York, of two boys raised in a breeding place of crime. When they meet again, years later, one has become a priest, the other an ex-convict. Miles apart in beliefs, friendship holds them together until fate steps in ruthlessly to solve their problems. You'll hear this superb drama with the same two stars who brought it to your theater, James Cagney and Pat O'Brien, and with them, Gloria Dixon. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents James Cagney and Pat O'Brien with Gloria Dixon in Angels with Dirty Faces. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Your announcer has been Melville Rose, and this is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>